it'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Let's smother this veggie. Sonic Kirby's Colors Adventure Ultimate Wii is the cancerous progenitor for the absolute embarrassment the current state of this Ebola-scented candle of a series. Spawned from the inky depths of inept corporate correction, this bewildering ballerina bunion is described as a return to form title, attempting to go back to the simpler, fun roots as seen in the classic 2D titles in order to avoid the issues that have plagued the recent 3D titles. Simple is right. It is nothing short of the cringiest, most nonsensical piece of flaming trash that has come out of this entire franchise. It single-handedly made it impossible to take any of this seriously, and retroactively makes Sonic 06 look like the friggin' Mona Lisa in comparison. Please, allow me to elaborate. We begin with our speedy blue protagonist running through a random zone, blissfully unaware of how colossally his characterization is about to be sandpapered into an unrecognizable nub of who he's supposed to be. Strangely, as Sonic makes his way through two zones, he absorbs random cosmic jellyfish, confusing everyone. The levels even end with him releasing a bunch of them from a futuristic Tupperware Easter egg, so they must be important. Now, I bet you've got a lot of questions, like, just what are these things? Where even is Sonic? Why is he here? How can he absorb these sentient beings? Why were they captured? Why on earth isn't there an explanation of any of this for two entire levels? Well, clinch those sphincters, ladies and gents, because we're plunging ear-first into cringe country for these answers. Welcome to Eggman's incredible Interstellar Amusement Park, where you can enjoy five planets for the price of one. So you mean to tell me that Robotnik, no I will not call him Eggman, has built this entire Interstellar Amusement Park out of five different planets, and Sonic and Tails are just now made aware of it? What in the cursed hell were they doing this whole time it took Robotnik to build this freaking thing? Playing Parcheesi? Isn't their entire job to stop him from conquering the world? He just conquered five off screen. How could you possibly let this happen? Remember when Robotnik used to just take over islands and that was cause for alarm and an immediate response? Remember when he built a space station several times and Sonic and Co. were always aware of it immediately after it was built, sometimes even during its construction? Then they did everything in their power to stop him from actually using the space station to conquer the world? Do you realize that even Lost World, in spite of itself, got this right? Remember when Sonic and Co. were actual heroes that saved the day regardless of what planet they were on or even what dimension they were in? Welp. This game certainly doesn't, evident by the first line Sonic says. To hear his own lips flap, but I gotta hand it to the eggster. This place is epic. What? Th who? Who in the freeze-dried crow's feet of Gary Busey is that? That's not Sonic. Sonic wouldn't say this poop garbage. He wouldn't be calmly meandering around the place, being impressed with Robotnik's horrific decimation of these planets, literally for his own amusement. Sonic would be finding a way to tear this whole thing apart as soon as possible and have a ton of fun doing it. And that at the very least, he wouldn't be impressed with Robotnik's designs and architecture. He'd be disgusted, exasperated, annoyed, maybe even bitter that Robotnik has succeeded this far despite his efforts to stop him. You know, like he's done before. I really like the consistency here, game. Thank you for this sludge of stupidity. This can't be Sonic. It's gotta be somebody else. Last time I called him Daniel, but today I think it's more fitting to go with Jake. <clears throat> so Jake, the brain-dead Muppet, continues to sashay about like a tourist with low standards instead of quickly getting to the bottom of this evil plot. Maybe even lamenting the fact that he couldn't save the five planets that Robotnik has conquered, but swearing to free them as soon as possible. Or maybe even trying to come up with a plan to do those things with Tails. So it's a good thing this is Jake and not Sonic, otherwise I might pop a blood vessel. Unfortunately, my blood vessel isn't out of the woods yet because Tails immediately says, So, an evil plot? I don't know. Huh? Nah. Is... 
Is this actually the first time you've met Robotnik, you idiotic lump of stale mashed potatoes? You must have a concave skull because you are not Tails. You can't be. I dub thee Norman instead. Stay tuned for that explanation because here comes the next torrent of stupid. Lucky for us, he's not very good at keeping things hidden. Apparently he is since you double dutch Darius numbnuts didn't notice this galactic interstellar amusement park connecting five planets to your own. It's literally got spotlights, fireworks, and loud music blaring from it. How did you just now notice it? Where the hell were you for several months slash years while this thing was being built? Instead of answering that question, or at least cutting to the end of the scene, they keep yammering on, mindlessly repeating the same stupid crap over and over. The longer you talk about this, the stupider you make yourself look. Move on, you retarded, knobby knuckle-draggers. I'm just surprised that it was so easy to sneak in here. What? I can't believe somebody was dumb enough to leave the keys in this thing. You what? Why didn't it just start here? Why have a friggin' flashback in the first five minutes of the game? This is a perfect place to begin the story. Why in the high-definition hell would you exchange it with this mess? Then play it afterwards. And they just trust the elevator to the stars won't plummet them down to their doom? I, has everyone forgotten that Robotnik built this whole thing? The same guy that tricked Jake into a trap where he launched an escape pod into space then blew it up? Even he forgets he built this whole thing because he has no security cameras, no alarm systems, no way of knowing when someone arrives on the amusement park or uses the space elevator, despite him knowing that it will draw the attention of the entire world because it's a multi-planetary contraption connected to their world. Why wouldn't everyone notice this? Was everyone on the planet incapable of looking up for several years straight? So when Jake shows up and sees that Robotnik is still trying to catch aliens in the first level of the game, the first place the elevator takes him to, of course Jake is convinced he's up to no good. When all Robotnik needed to do was capture the aliens first, then install the dang elevator. Because if he didn't have the elevator, they wouldn't have shown up when they did, and the entire game wouldn't have happened. So the entire story snaps in half, and this is only the first scene. But nah, Robotnik couldn't be bothered to be even slightly be competent in this game, because if he was, he'd have some indicator or camera telling him who's using his elevator to get to his resort, see that it's Jake, Bong, American piss ant, then blow it up. Or, at the very least, stop it so they're trapped while he sends his Batniks to engage them, allowing him to get the rest of his plan together. That way, the first level of the game can be an interesting set piece, and we avoid introducing the Wisps as a core mechanic before we're introduced to them in story. Plus, it makes Jake and Norman look even cooler if they bust out of an elevator in the middle of friggin' space and climb the rest of the way while fighting off robots. That sounds so awesome and entertaining and in character for everyone. So, of course, they don't even attempt to do anything like that. Amusement Park has been constructed entirely out of a sense of remorse for my past transgressions and is in no way associated with any sort of evil plot or premeditated misdeeds. Not even Knuckles would believe that obvious lie. If that was true, wouldn't this be advertised like crazy, not built in secret? Why would it be a secret if it's a public thing built to undo his crimes against life itself? Why wouldn't Norman just investigate it a little bit and figure out if Gunn or some other organization is backing him? See if Robotnik has the necessary paperwork or permission to build on these planets? You know, something to prop this lie up even slightly? Aren't these characters supposed to be super geniuses? Why are they brain-dead hamsters in this game? Because joke? Newsflash, the joke's not good, so it's even worse than if it was serious. Spectacular, I can feel the aneurysm already. And now, may I present to you the bane of my existence. You! Both of you! The duo of insufferably obnoxious shapes, apple ball and lemon brick, is congealed. Why? Why on God's green earth are these two frickin' abominations to comic relief still in this franchise after all this time? Why did Robotnik create robots with the ability to complain, insult, 
undermine, and worst of all, make jokes in the first place. Isn't that antithetical to his goals and himself? He's got a massive ego. He would create beings to stroke that ego, not trod all over it. This makes absolutely no sense. Sush, you're taking it too seriously. They're just supposed to be funny additions to the story. I'm sure someone is saying, here's my rebuttal. One, they fail at being funny. Therefore, they fail at the sole purpose of their existence. So in trying to defend them, you've made the problem even worse. Great job. And two, you cannot sacrifice logic and reason just in order for comic relief characters to exist. That's insanely bad writing. What you need to do is justify these comic relief characters in a clever and amusing way. For instance, a lot of comic relief characters are assistants to bad guys because the bad guys literally don't have anyone else stupid enough slash desperate enough to follow them. Other comic relief characters aren't connected to the bad guys, but are instead background characters that appear when a joke is needed and they don't have any story significance at all. Think news anchors or quirky town locals, something like that. Other stories use multiple one-off characters for comic relief. That way, no one character needs to shoulder the burden of being comic relief at all times. And the one-off characters make sense for the place they're in. If the story takes place in different locations, that way no one has to wonder how a comic relief character that isn't part of the main character group has traveled with the main characters all through their journey. The point is, there are multiple ways to implement comic relief characters without breaking your world and painting your main characters as insanely self-sabotaging burnt chicken nuggets. Robotnik is not an idiot. I loathe my existence on this planet for needing to say that, but Robotnik is not an idiot. He literally has a 300 IQ. He built this entire interplanetary amusement park. He understands and learns how to implement alien energy into technology effectively. In so little time, it's scary. Not only that, but he has repeatedly shown himself to be shrewd enough to manipulate others into doing what he wants. Not just Knuckles the gullible warrior, but Shadow the 50 plus year old skeptic and Jet the experienced leader of rogues as well. Heck, there's a reason why it's not rocket science is a common saying that everyone uses. It illustrates just how difficult understanding rocket science is. Robotnik understands rocket science, among many, many, many other fields of science. He is not a frickin' idiot, for Christ's sake. He is an evil genius. In all caps, goddammit. I am Dr. Robotnik. The greatest scientific genius in the world! He wouldn't intentionally make these robots behave like this, and if he accidentally did, he would immediately fix them so they are more loyal, less annoying, and more competent. And if he didn't fix them immediately, it would be for a very good reason. There would be some major event or obstacle keeping him from accessing tools to fix his robots. There has to be some reason why Apple Ball and Lemon Brick are the way they are and why Robotnik isn't fixing them, but we never get one inkling of a reason. The fact that the writers force him to have these idiotic floating shapes is so character-breaking that it induces nausea every time I see them. Thankfully, Jake appears to put a stop to their scene, which I am grateful for. But then my gratitude is immediately sapped away when the weird flying squigglies do this. This is going to be some old bull spit, ain't it? Yep! We'll get to it later, trust me on that. But good Gordon Ramsay's wisps are really stupid and unnecessary. And it just so happens that the monochrome Cyclops goes into Jake before he can get answers out of the obnoxious floating shapes and subsequently destroy them. Because why wouldn't he? So because of these stupid Technicolor tapeworms, Sarcasm Orb, and Idiot Cube still get to exist. Because they're vitally necessary to the plot. I wish I was joking. Let me see here. Gotta connect the framostatic capacitor to the maximizing modulationizer. Okay, I know that this is techno babble and it's just here for fluff. I get that. But it's still stupid. You can't have a modulator that is also a nizer. It's just a modulator. There's nothing wrong with just saying modulator. You don't have to screw every single line up. Sash, stop nitpicking. It's just a joke. 
you're taking it too seriously. I sense someone saying, again, Breaking news, calling something a joke doesn't defend it from criticism. Stop trying to use the word joke as a shield for criticism. Listen carefully now, children. Everything in existence is open to criticism. Every single thing. Yes, art. Yes, music. Yes, even your feelings and opinions. Everything can be criticized. Everything. Don't believe me? Ask a professional comedian to explain the difference between Amy Schumer and Dave Chappelle. Ask an accomplished musician to explain the difference between Anita Baker and Rebecca Black. Ask an experienced actor to explain the difference between Leonardo DiCaprio and Mila Jovovich. You'll end up seeing that all of these things can be broken down mechanically and measured objectively, I assure you that. So stop trying to shield and guard things from criticism. It's good to criticize and analyze things. And at the very least, use the it's a joke shield for when a joke is actually well written and doesn't destroy characters, world building, or plot. This isn't even a joke that's intended to make people laugh. This is lazy anus techno babble that the writers didn't think about at all. And jokes should have some thought put into them. Otherwise, they're bad jokes that will not stand up to criticism. Get used to that because there's going to be quite a lot of those slapping you in the face as this coma-inducing script continues. And I don't want to have to constantly remind people that their crappy defense of a crappy joke is crap. Just because you don't know how to criticize comedy objectively doesn't mean it's not possible. Okay. Oh man, that was crazy! Oh, I was reconfiguring my handheld into a translator so I can understand this guy. Did you go somewhere? Didn't you see? I absorbed those aliens and got powered up with, like, some kind of wild energy. And after a few seconds, they'd pop out of me. Uh, I find that hard to believe. Really? Are you seriously trying to go there right now? He literally just flew in surrounded by scion energy radiating off of him and an alien exploded out of his chest. This happened two feet from your goddamn face. How do you not see it in your peripheral? With eyes that big, you can't tell me your peripheral vision isn't all-encompassing. And even if you didn't see Jake squeezing out an alien from his chest cavity, it doesn't matter. You have seen ancient water gods, ghosts, and spirits. The planet broken into pieces several times. The moon blasted in half. Several other dimensions and realms. Friggin' magic. Friggin' aliens. Friggin' magical aliens. And everything else in between. You can fly by spinning your butt really fast. Are you seriously going to draw the line at aliens temporarily giving Jake powers? Yeah, no. You're not Tails. You're some seed sop pleb that wandered into the story. A bobble-headed jobber piss bandit that replicated his form like some lazy body snatcher reject. This is is Norman, a useless, atmospheric waste that is a walking insult to the actual tales. Awesome. Uh. It's not like I wanted Sonic characters in this Sonic game. Okay, seriously? We need to find Eggman and figure out how catching these aliens fits into whatever heinous plan he's hatching. And wreck that plan, right? Yeah, that's pretty much how we spend our time. It is absolutely insane to me that the writers keep repeating how obvious Robotnik's scheme is and how dedicated to stopping him Jake and Norman are, yet they forgot that stuff like this takes a lot of time and effort to accomplish and would draw the entire planet's attention during construction. If they notice when he takes over a goddamn casino, then they'd notice this shiz. Let me be clear. In previous games, Robotnik would take over remote islands in secret build highly advanced fortresses, in secret. Build an entire fleet of ships and army of robots, in secret. The key to all of this was that he intentionally did all of it in secret, because he wanted his plans to be a little closer to completion before drawing attention to himself. So he did smaller scale things, then ramped it up. This right here, this is impossibly large. There's absolutely no way he could have done this without people knowing, let alone Norman, who is supposed to be the tech genius keeping an eye out for Robotnik's activities. 
The writers never explain Jack's spit about how no one, and I mean no man, woman, boy, girl, or any other creature, noticed and or stopped Robotnik before it got to this point. The premise itself is broken, so everything stemming from it is destined to be unrelenting, uncensored, unadulterated trash. Robotnik proves he's still smart enough to count to 25, though not without the help of pointing like a kindergartner. And good lord, those two insults to humor are back. Ah, not nearly enough aliens. Want us to get more? No, I want you to get me a cheeseburger and a shake. That'll be easier. Cheeseburgers don't run as fast as them little alien varmints. <laughs> Idiot. Get me more aliens. Y'all want fries with that? Go! I reckon that hurt a bit. Are you done? Are, are, you, are, you, are you done? Wait a minute, I need to go over yonder. Shut up! Man, oh man, that was so funny, guys. Lemon Brick is so dumb, he doesn't know what sarcasm is. Despite his counterpart, being entirely made of sarcasm. It's funny because it doesn't make any sense and is in no way clever at all. Aren't you glad we wasted an entire 40 seconds on that? Robotnik then speaks to the open air and reveals his entire plan, instead of, you know, just doing the plan, like he would if he was in character. Why are you revealing all of this vital information to the goddamned atmosphere, why are you like this when before and after this game, you don't act like this? As much as I hate Lost World, he didn't even do this there. He kept his plans a secret until he absolutely couldn't without risking the entire world. Why is this game so bad it's making Lost World look better by comparison? What dimension did I slip into? The Rotund Scientist calls the magic gas that makes the alien special Hyper Go On Power making me want to cringe until I implode into a smoldering crater before dropping this absolute gem of a line. And then nothing will stop me. I know I say that every time, but this time really nothing will stop me. No, sir, I don't like it. You realize breaking the fourth wall in and of itself is not a joke, right? You have to actually make a joke when you break the fourth wall. You have to put in more effort than that. This is equivalent to him saying, I am self-aware, and the scene continuing as normal. There's nothing to that joke, not at all. It's just bad. It's cringe, not comedy. Unfortunately, things only get worse when the blueberry-flavored dickhead shows up to hop aboard the unfunny joke train. Who are you calling nothing? Whack. He means since the boss said nothing will stop me, and Sonic here is going to stop him, it's like the boss was calling Sonic nothing. How about new? I just... I... Why is this happening? The one thing that everyone knows, even children, is you don't explain a joke. If you have to explain a joke, there is no joke! It should be funny, clever, witty, or entertaining on its own. The second you start explaining the joke, you've ruined it. Just tell the joke and let it land or flop, then move on. What is the writer's obsession with lingering for as long as possible on every single joke in this cancerous lump of a script? Get this shiz out of here, you smooth brain cherry pop-tarts. And why in the blue blazes is Robotnik shocked to see Jake here? Mofo, we've been through six whole acts at this point. Were you in a freaking drunken stupor until five seconds before this scene? What the crap? You don't have something that keeps track of how many badniks you still have left? Two working eyes and ears? A halfway functioning brain rattling around in that dome you call a skull? Not only did he not see Jake coming, no he was there after he blew his way through an entire resort the size of Russia, but he also didn't have contingencies in place for when Jake did show up. I mean, it's Jake, man! After all these encounters with him, you really didn't have something planned for when he showed up? Something waiting in the wings to pounce on the obnoxious little rat? In every other game, you do, but in this one, you don't because... Joke. 
because unfunny bottom of the barrel barely qualifies as a joke. Yep, there's the aneurysm. How about friggin' pretending you're on the up and up? You know, like you did in the second intro to this drag. Why not just lie and say you made a deal with some version of the United Nations to do this? Tell him you're backed by some multi-billion dollar companies. Tell him this is a part of your community service. Tell him the other planets are under the jurisdiction of an alien government that gave you the go-ahead to do this. Say or do anything to prop up your goddamn front to keep people from trashing your plans, you goompy shrub of chlamydia. Cue underwhelming and uninspired boss fight, but not before continuing to drag out some horrendously unfunny comments that technically could qualify as a joke. For the love of Patrick Stewart, let the dead horse rest in peace. Stop beating it, you crispy, illiterate sadists. Moonwalking forward, Jake goes back to Norman, who has done absolutely nothing useful this entire story so far and will continue not to do so in this scene. The writers are really trying to pretend otherwise, but nope. Norman is a nothing burger with nothing fries and a side of nothing shake in this rotting Christmas lights wrapped corpse of a game. What, don't believe me? Let's take a look at what he spent the last five acts in an entire boss fight doing. Oh, there you are. Where'd you run off to? I did a little shopping, grabbed a bite to eat, and trashed a giant killer robot. Oh, really? And they've got shopping here too? This place has everything. Hey, so how's your translator thingy coming along? Uh, I think it's done. It's in binary code, so only I can read it. Okay. <clears throat> Skin tone, chicken bone, leave me alone, head. <laughs> okay, he says his name is Talks a Lot. Ah! And he's from a faraway soda. Ah! And where flowers water them with dance. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, uh. I think your machine still has some bugs. Genius! Okay, he said his name is Yacker. He's from a race of beings called Wisps. Wisps? No, Wisps, with a W. Yeah, I'll just stick with aliens if that's okay with everybody. <laughs> oh, sure. So anyway, they're either being used for their magical powers by an evil man, or to make underwear to be... Ah, ha, ha, ha! Them, save them over and over. Huh. Uh, that's interesting. When I was running around trashing robots, I saw a map that had a couple of interesting places. Oh. I think I'll go check them out and maybe save some aliens. Question time. How useful is this information to the rest of the story? We learn that this oversized sperm worm is a victim of Robotnik's scheme because of the magic gas they produce, and he wants Jake to save all of his people. So, how is this news? Robotnik already told the audience slash Jake this just before the boss battle. Jake rescued the alien because the Wonder Twins were terrorizing them. Heck, Jake got into the elevator for the sole purpose of destroying this whole gaudy, gilded turd convention. So before this moment, Jake knows what he has to do and is prepared to do it with frustrating ease. So again, I ask, how useful is this information to the rest of the story? Answer, it's not. And this is all Norman is here to do. Read the translation of the flying marshmallow cyclops following Jake around all game long. Meaning there's no purpose in Norman being here. He could be replaced with literally anyone and the story wouldn't change. But Saj, I hear some people saying, Tail said only he could read what Yakker is saying. He built the translator and he is the only one who can read binary code. The story would change without Tails. And to that I say, you've not been paying attention. Robotnik tells Jake his plan for some unholy reason. Norman isn't necessary to deduce it, evident by the fact that he's not even in the scene. Jake helped the aliens before Norman even knew of their existence. Jake was going to rescue them from Robotnik regardless of language barrier, and they were going to power him up regardless of language barrier. Or consent. So once again, listen very closely. Norman is a friggin' prop in this game. He does absolutely nothing useful at all in this entire game. He's just set dressing and a vehicle to deliver stale, 
idiotic, vapid, unfunny lines. That's it. The game would actually benefit a lot more if he wasn't in it. Do you understand the absolute state that we are in right now? Tales, the absolute delight and irreplaceable addition to the series, the timid but brilliant little brother who has grown and developed into his own kind of hero, is superfluous in this mainline game. And instead of saving him from character assassination by simply leaving him out of this game, they kidnapped him and lobotomized him to make him this ridiculous cardboard cutout. And to add insult to injury, the fluffer nutter frick what? couldn't even make a perfectly functioning translator until the end of the game. Boiling hot excrement.